In this problem, we again want to investigate the airflow around the real car. And we do this again with a 1 to 20 small scale model in a wind tunnel. And this time what we know, the input parameters of the problem are the properties of the flow on the wind tunnel model down here, on the small scale model. And we want to know, given those, what are the equivalent conditions that we are simulating um, on the real car. So again, we're interested in turbulence, in friction losses, in viscosity. And so again, the parameter for um, comparing those and for scaling the two flows is the Reynolds number. And so we equate the Reynolds number between the real, real car and the scale car, like so. And again, I have labeled those A and C this time um, to not get too confused between the different properties of uh, the fluid at different uh, positions. So let's expand those and see how we can find uh, the speed that is reproduced on the real car in the conditions that we have in the wind tunnel here, the equivalent speed, if you want. The Reynolds number on the real car is rho times v times l over mu. And I'm going to put the indices here, a, on all of those. And this is set equal um, by uh, our, our analysis to uh, the Reynolds number on the model car, which is rho c, v c, l c over mu c, like so. Okay, what are we looking for in this problem? The parameter we're trying to identify is VA. What is the velocity on the real car that we are simulating using this tiny model, which is right here? And so we isolate this parameter as we did before last time. And this time VA is equal to VC uh, rho C over rho A, LC over LA, and then mu a over mu c, like so. Okay, what is happening in this problem this time? Perhaps before I do this, let me rearrange the writing so that I can have all the fractions align one with the other, um, like so, yes. What is happening in this problem? We have cheated a little bit by having here a very low temperature and try to push the parameters in our direction. And what we want to see with this problem is to uh, quantify how much we can win using cool air inside a wind tunnel right here compared to hot air uh, around the real car over there. What, it has, what has happened? We have increased the density in C compared to the density in A. And we have increased the viscosity in, in C compared to the viscosity in A. So let's see what the numbers are going to be. The density here we are going to quantify using a separate, a separate parameter. And this parameter um, is temperature. And so we're going to re-express rho as a function of temperature. So I'm opening here a, a parenthesis, if you want, uh, like so. And I'm going to say um, air is, to a good extent, uh, model, modeled as a perfect gas. And in perfect gas, we have pressure divided by density as a constant multiplied by temperature. This is not the universal constant. It's the gas-specific constant. And so if I rearrange this, I have rho here um, is equal to P pressure divided by RT over there. And if in between problems, I'm not changing pressure, then P and R here in this problem will remain the same so that I can simply replace rho by one over T. So the ratios of rho of densities uh, will be simply replaced by the ratios of temperatures over there. So let me, let me show what I mean. Let's close this bracket here. And let's move down a little bit into the page to be able to continue our, our exploration. So we have now uh, continuing this exploration for VA here. We have VA is VC multiplied by the ratios of densities become the inverse of the ratios of temperatures. And so we have now TA divided by TC here. I don't know what the pressure is and I do not even need to know what the gas constant is for air because those two parameters appear on both sides of the on both um, top and bottom of the fraction uh, then we have lc over la and then we have mu a over mu c so all we have to do now is to put in the numbers into this equation to figure out uh, how much we can win 
the A is going to be VC. VC, in our case, happens to be, if I come back up here, happens to be the velocity in the wind tunnel, uh, which is down there in the bottom right corner at 20 meters per second. So I'm going to put here 20 meters per second. Temperatures, the ratio of temperatures, you just simply have to put in the temperatures. It is very cool in the tunnel, um, so it's zero degrees, but I want to convert this into Kelvins because I'm dividing temperatures. And so I want to have 273.15 plus the temperature in the tunnel. I'm sorry, TA is going to be the temperature on the car. This is the good thing about labeling things clearly at the, at the start. TA is the temperature at the car, and this is 25 degrees. So I'm going to have here 273.15 plus 25. And on the bottom, I'm going to have the temperature inside the tunnel, which is very cool, which is 273.15 plus zero, the zero degrees of the tunnel. Then I have the ratios of sizes, and I have again here LC, uh, the length of the car on C is 1 20th of the size of the real car. And so LC over LA is going to be here. Here we go. Is going to be here. Uh, LC, the length of the car, 1 over 20. And then I multiply this by the ratios of viscosities. And viscosities, we have to read. We have to read them in a, in a diagram uh, for viscosities, which I have on the next page here. And we're going to look for the viscosity of the air at on the car. And on the car, it's 25 degrees. So I'm going to move on to the viscosity diagram here. I'm going to look for air. Air is the green curve, which is in diagonal here. Uh, and on this green curve, I'm going to look for a temperature of 25 degrees. 25 degrees I find at the bottom, 20 and 40. So this is about 30 and 25 will be approximately here. If I shoot up from here onto this curve, I should land approximately there here. And if I shoot to the right here, over there, I will read something that's in between 1.8 and 2 and not quite in the middle yet. So I'm going to say here uh, 1.85. Precision. Uh, need, would need to be higher if we were really serious about this calculation, but this is for principle. So I'm going to say here, this is 1.85, and uh, I'm going to check very carefully what the exponents here, and this is 1 times 10 to the power of minus 5 Pascal seconds. Going back down here, here we are, 1.85 times 10 to the power of minus 5. On the bottom, I have temperature, um, the viscosity at the at the temperature corresponding to the temperature in the wind tunnel and this is very cold it's going to be at zero at zero degrees now at zero degrees i intercept this curve here here and i shoot to the right and i land approximately here and this gives me approximately 1.72 i have decided 1.72 times 10 to the power minus 5. so now if i put this value over here i get 1.72 times 10 to the power minus 5 over here and so we can just calculate now this series of, of numbers. And just before I put everything into the calculator, I like to see what the different influences um, of different terms are. And so I'm going to replace them one by one. And so I have 20 multiplied by, this turns out to be 1.09. I'm cheating, I did this before. Um, this is 1 over 20. And this is here, this is uh, 1.076 approximately. So you can see that by cooling the air uh, from 25 degrees to zero degrees, which is quite chilly, quite difficult to reproduce in, um, in a machine inside the building, uh, we have gained, uh, from the density point of view, we have gained about 10%. And from the viscosity point of view, we have gained about approximately 8%. And it turns out, uh, if you multiply those terms, you get 20 multiplied by approximately... Um, uh, this, the multiplication of those two terms here is going to be 1.174 and then you also have to divide by 20 the speed here so in the end you get 1.174 and this is a velocity that we calculate this is VA over here so so much for the physics uh, now comes the engineer the engineer he is very disappointed with this result because look we have a small scale model, which is there, uh, which we run at a fairly high speed, 20 meters per second. This would be approximately 70 or 80 kilometers per hour, which is not a negligible speed. Uh, and we have cooled this air. So we spent all the energy needed to 
uh, remove the heat from the air uh, to zero degrees to try to move the Reynolds number our way, to increase the Reynolds number. And in the end, on this model here, we reproduce turbulence and we reproduce the effect of viscosity on the real car, only up to a speed of 1.1 meter per second or 1.2 meters per second. 1.2 meters per second, this is three or four kilometers per hour. Um, this is the walking speed. So this is not a very high speed at all. Uh, so this shows you a little bit the cost of playing with the Reynolds number uh, when you have very large changes in scale. It is very expensive. Um, and you need very complex equipment to be able to move parameters your way. So again, as I explained in the last video, you want to play with other techniques than just modifying the properties of the air. You want to play with the model surface roughness, and you may even consider changing fluids um, to be able to increase the Reynolds number when you're playing with small scale models. So here, uh, this is a good exploration, I think, of the scale effects when you try to make models of full-scale cars.